Welcome to an introductory webinar created by NetScout. This presentation is designed to provide you with an overview of a growing trend in network and application test labs where organizations are looking to save on capital and operational expenditures by moving to a lab-as-a-service model. Using this approach, organizations can increase utilization of their test lab resources, reduce the amount of time required for test setup and teardown, and most importantly, save money. In this webinar, we'll cover the drivers and challenges around implementing a lab-as-a-service model, and we'll also introduce an innovative approach to optimizing service-oriented labs. First, let's review what the traditional approach looks like today. A typical test lab is made up of test tools, supporting infrastructure like patch panels and cabling, and the systems under test. Labs often require a variety of test tools with different functionality and interface speeds in order to meet all of the test needs. In this diagram, we're looking at a proof-of-concept test lab that contains 1, 10, 40, and 100 gigabit test configurations. We can also see that the lab has a need for more 100 gigabit test tools, while there are some 10 gigabit tools that are not currently being used at all. Here we have a system test lab. This lab has similar characteristics as the proof of concept lab, but it is dedicated to a different purpose and is being used and maintained by a different organization. This QA lab looks similar to the first two labs we just saw, but once again, it's being used and maintained by a different organization. Over time, organizations evolve and test labs can become scattered, both organizationally and geographically. Other factors that can influence test lab location include mergers and acquisitions, changes in hiring practices, and evolving product lines. Eventually, most companies end up with many single-use labs spread over multiple locations. This scenario prohibits efficient resource sharing even within a single organization, and it multiplies the inefficiencies that exist within each lab. Now, let's take a look at the key drivers for implementing a service-oriented lab. On the CapEx side, we see that each lab has a need for new test tools. Pressure to complete test cycles faster and the need to test using the latest interface speeds fuels a perpetual need for new test tools. Also, each lab needs to be equipped for peak usage demands. In many cases, an individual lab can't dictate test schedules. Other events like product development schedules or customer escalations require test labs to accommodate the business need. Poor utilization of test tools, which can occur for many reasons, leads to an unrealized return on investment for those expensive tools. We also see drivers on the OPEX side of the equation. Each physical lab has certain overhead costs for power, cooling, and infrastructure and each lab needs to deal with time-consuming network topology changes in order to meet specific test needs. And finally, each lab has staffing requirements in order to maintain a complex mix of test tools, systems under test, and physical infrastructure. Let's take a closer look at the primary characteristics of labs that enable lab-as-a-service. One of the most important outcomes when implementing lab-as-a-service is that a company ends up with a consolidated lab footprint. This results in far fewer physical labs to maintain, and it begins to facilitate more efficient sharing of tools and infrastructure. Remember, the transition to a lab-as-a-service model is not an all-or-nothing proposition, and some single-use labs will likely remain in operation. Another benefit of having a consolidated lab footprint is that far fewer high bandwidth links are required in order to facilitate sharing. Service-oriented labs have centralized lab management. This allows a single organization to focus on lab operation and delivering a service that meets the needs of customers. In contrast, in a single-use lab environment, lab managers often struggle to prioritize efficiency improvements. Service-oriented labs serve multiple organizations, the impact of this is twofold. First, the lab needs to have the breadth of tools, equipment, and infrastructure required to support each of the organization's test needs. Second, 
The lab needs to be agile with regard to setup and teardown of test network topologies. As we've seen, some test organizations operate under predictable schedules. Others are driven by external forces that create the need for quick turnaround. In either case, the ability to rapidly create a test bed is paramount to implementing lab as a service. Not only do service-oriented labs need to be agile, they also have limited physical access. In most cases, lab services are extended across a wide geography, and it simply isn't practical for test engineers to have physical access to the lab. Additionally, since service-oriented labs are larger than single-use labs, it is necessary to limit the physical access in order to maintain control of the lab infrastructure and topology. When implemented on a global scale, service-oriented labs operate on a 24 by 7 basis. This means that test engineers are using the lab around the clock and that test topologies can be created any time of the day or night. Now, let's look at the keys to success when implementing lab as a service. First, we need to increase utilization by making people more effective and using infrastructure more efficiently. Next, reduce the time required to complete a test cycle by using remote management and automation to configure specific test topologies. The last and most important key to success is to save money by reducing the amount of spend on test tools and infrastructure and reduce costs through lab consolidation. Now that we've seen the drivers and key objectives for lab as a service, let's look at one approach to implementing a service-oriented lab. This diagram represents a scenario where multiple labs were consolidated but not optimized. We can see that equipment from multiple test labs was moved to a single location to form a larger lab, and that a lab management team was tasked with implementing lab as a service. Unfortunately, the inefficiencies of the single-use labs were also carried forward, thus making it very difficult to increase utilization, reduce time, or save money with the new approach. With this approach, cost drivers are not addressed, expected savings are not realized, and the project will not succeed. Of course, this approach is not recommended. This diagram represents NetScout's approach to creating a service-oriented lab. Using this approach, single-use labs are not only consolidated into a larger lab, but the lab is optimized in the process. As a result, lab resources can be shared efficiently, topology changes can be made remotely, and core lab functions are centralized in order to help realize the full return on investment potential of a lab-as-a-service model. NetScout's test optimization solutions help improve the efficiency, speed, and performance of network and application test labs. This is done by combining Layer 1 switching with Layer 2 through 4 intelligence in scalable configurations, all controlled by easy-to-use application software or third-party tools. Combining Layer 1 switching with Layer 2 through 4 intelligence enables lab managers and test engineers to access functions that would otherwise require additional equipment. Supplying higher-level functions along with Layer 1 switching simplifies the test configuration and reduces variability in test execution. These functions can be applied to any test stream and without the need to physically access the lab. Let's take a closer look at some of the functions. First, we have Layer 1 switching. Layer 1 switching enables lab managers to quickly build test topologies from pooled resources. This greatly improves the availability of test tools and increases the speed of topology changes. Since all configuration changes are done remotely via software, downtime caused by failed cables and dirty connectors is nearly eliminated. Next, let's look at how aggregation and rate conversion can help optimize a service-oriented lab. Using the aggregation and rate conversion functions, lab managers can increase utilization of test tools by using lower speed tools for higher speed tests. In this example, there are not enough 40 gigabit test tool ports to meet the current demand. Rather than wait for these ports to become available, the lab manager can make use of unused 10 gigabit tool ports instead 
in order to meet the current demand for those 40 gigabit tests. In addition to increasing utilization and decreasing wait times, aggregation and rate conversion can greatly extend the useful lifespan of expensive test tools, thereby postponing or eliminating the need for additional expenditures. Our final example looks at a very common occurrence in testing, the need to analyze test streams using a tap. Test engineers often need to analyze live test streams in order to diagnose problems. In single-use labs, this can be accomplished by using a physical tap or by establishing a mirror port on a switch. These solutions are less than ideal in a lab-as-a-service model where physical access is not an option and mirror ports might not be available or might have adverse effects on the test itself. NetScout's solution allows users to apply a tap to any test stream without requiring physical access to the lab and without impacting the test. Additionally, the user can apply layer 2 through 4 filters on the tap traffic in order to reduce the load on the analysis tools. Having tap and filter capability built into the infrastructure increases the speed of the analysis and debug cycle, therefore improving the efficiency of the test engineers. This webinar has outlined the drivers, challenges, and keys to success for implementing Lab as a Service. NetScout's test optimization solutions offer Layer 1 switching with Layer 2 through 4 intelligence. Our solutions play a vital role in ensuring that cost drivers are addressed and efficiency is improved through increased utilization of test tools, a reduction in the amount of time required to configure and tear down test topologies, and money saved on test tools and infrastructure. Thank you for listening to this webinar. For more information, please contact your local NetScout account manager or visit www.netscout.com.